the Johnson Wax Program with Fibber McGee and Molly. The makers of Johnson's Wax products for home and industry present Fibber McGee and Molly, written by Don Quinn and Phil Leslie, with music by the King's Men and Billy Mills Orchestra. What makes the difference between a car that's dull and one that shines? Johnson's car new and an hour or so of your time. That's the difference. People who haven't used wax fortified car new can't possibly realize how easily it transforms the looks of their car, removes the road grime and dullness, and restores that original showroom shine. Now that you're using your car regularly, there's no reason for not being proud of its looks. Car new does an amazing cleaning job, and what's more, it does two jobs at the same time cleans and polishes with one application. It leaves the finish beautiful, and so wax smooth, the dirt and grime don't have an easy foothold. Carnew is a liquid polish, easy to apply with a cloth. It dries to a white powder, and when you wipe off this powder, the dirt and dullness disappear like magic. Your dealer has plenty of Carnew. Why not try it this week? Ask for Johnson's Carnew, spelled C-A-R-N-U. <laughs> like to introduce to you two well-known pedestrians who have just decided to become motorists. Yes, the folks at 79 Westful Vista have made up their minds to buy a new car. As new as you can get one now, anyway. And here, looking over the want ads, we find Fibber McGee and Bolly. Well, what's in the papers, Daddy? <laughs> Lots of wonderful cars being advertised. <laughs> Cadillacs, Lincolns, Packards, Apperson, Jackrabbits. <laughs> hey, hey, here's an interesting one. Read it in your well-modulated voice. It says, 1939 Coupe by school teacher with leather rumble seat, <laughs> knee action and custom-built body. Is she a blonde or brunette? Or does she have a convertible top? Don't say How much is it? Don't say that either It just says uh, Bring an honest face Oh Well, that'll be easy You can take me Mm -hmm. Say, here's an ad That looks good, Molly Bantams for sale Oh, I've always wanted One of those little cars Mm -hmm. How much are they? Hens, three dollars Rooster, (laughs) four I'm on the wrong page (laughs) Oblige, sir Look, dearie, uh, why don't we just go downtown and prowl through the used car lot? Not a bad idea, Snooky. I like to walk around poking the upholstery and kicking the tires. (laughs) Anybody who would kick a tire these days is taking his life and his feet. (laughs) Besides, it isn't... Come in. Oh, hello, Dr. Gamble. Hello, my dear. And a curt nod of recognition to you, pickled puss. (laughs) Well, vaccinate my goldfish if it isn't the old belly thumper himself. (laughs) What's new in the world of medicine, witch doctor, as if you'd know? I uh, see where Mayor Latrivia has appointed you health commissioner, doctor. Congratulations. Thank you, Molly. After squawking my head off for 20 years about sanitary conditions in this town, I am now in a position where I have to do something about it or shut my big fat mouth. (laughs) You ain't yodeling the Indian love call there, bone bender. (laughs) When do you take office? January 1st. Why? I just wondered how much longer it'd be safe for us to drink our city water. (laughs) Make a note of that, Molly. The first of the year, we start using bottled water. (laughs) Don't be insulting, dearie. I'm sure Dr. Gamble will be a wonderful health commissioner. Ah, but uh, among them city hall vultures, he'll just be a boob in the woods. (laughs) Them ward healers will hamstring him so he can't prescribe an aspirin tablet without a referendum. (laughs) 
On the contrary, my boy, I will have the freest hand of any health commissioner in history. Why, doctor? Due to my high ethical standards, my dear, I hesitate to use the word blackmail. Hmm? But Alderman McClutchy would find it difficult to explain why I had to remove a pearl earring from his larynx when his wife does not wear earrings. <laughs> And city treasurer Fink might not care to have it bruited about that he broke his leg leaping out the second story window of a gambling joint. I am not quoting actual names, you understand, but you get the idea. <laughs> yes, I think the lads will treat the new commissioner with considerable courtesy. Doc, I've underrated you. Thank you. I underrate you, too. <laughs> Thanks. You're not just saying that because you admire me. <laughs> yes, I am. And now I think I'd better be going. I have a delicate operation waiting for me at the hospital. Something real fancy, eh, Doc? Yes, I have to tell one of our wealthier patients to get up and go home. His hangover has progressed from the amusing to the obnoxious. <laughs> Goodbye, Molly. See you later, loose lip. I'm afraid. <laughs> Isn't he a sweet old character? Uh, he's an insulting old curmudgeon. Hey, what's a curmudgeon? Search me, dearie. I know what a cur is, but I wouldn't know about mudgeon. <laughs> Hadn't we better be going downtown to look for a car? Yeah, I guess we better have. You all ready? Well, I will be just as soon as I put my face on. Mm -hmm. Now, you lock the door. Okay, please. I'll get everything down here. Ah, there goes a good kid. She knows buying a car these days is pretty chancy. And she knows what a bum driver I am. But is she worried? Scared stiff. <laughs> is she going to let me know she's scared? No, siree. Not till 20 seconds after I stick that key in the ignition. <laughs> Why, George, if she... Come in. Hi, mister. Well, slice me down the middle and call me Slim. <laughs> if it isn't little Teeny. Yeah. Hi, Teeny. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> what you doing, mister? Hmm? What you doing? Hmm? Watch ya. Well, sis, I and Mrs. McGee are about to go car buying. Mommy and Poppy shopping for a jalopy. Oh. <laughs> Gee, that's dandy, mister. Why don't you get a car that the top goes up and down on it and buy it while the top is down? Hmm? Why don't you? Now, there must be some glimmering of sense behind that idea, sis, but I don't seem to get it. Why should I buy a car that the top down? No ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> that was a joke. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> If I ever want to saw my way out of a radio program, sis, I'll borrow your gag fire. <laughs> now, if you'll excuse hey, me, I... Hey, mister, what kind of car are you going to buy? My daddy has a cab. Not only has, he is. <laughs> <laughs> Frankly, Teeny, we don't know exactly what we want as yet. We're going to romp through a few used car lots and take a gander at the situation. Uh huh? What do you think of the Stanley Steamer? Well, I... Uh... Hmm? <laughs> I might go for a station wagon if I can find a good bargain. Oh, my daddy doesn't like station wagons. Mm -hmm. You know why? No, why? It's because he doesn't like police dogs. Oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> Have I got my pajamas on, sis? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, that's good. I was afraid I was dreaming this whole conversation. <laughs> Tell me, Madam Interlocutor, why doesn't your daddy like station wagons because he hates police dogs? Well, he had a station wagon once, and somebody told him a station wagon didn't look good unless it had a police dog in it. Uh -huh. So he got a police dog, and it sat in the front seat with him. Uh -huh. And a cop stopped him one day when he was going too fast, uh -huh. and he asked my daddy why he didn't let his friend drive because he looked more intelligent than my daddy. <laughs> Well, I've seen your old <clears throat> daddy. <laughs> and I've seen police dogs, and I'm inclined to agree with the... Stop! With the... I will not listen. Okay. My daddy is a good, kind man, oh. and he's always given me a quarter for a soda. I will not stand here and listen to unkind remarks about him. Well, I've given you plenty of quarters for sodas myself, sis. Yes. Not lately, I bet you. Okay. <laughs> okay, here's a quarter. Means I'll have to buy a cheaper car, but who cares? Oh, Thank you, mister. Now then, what were you saying about my daddy? I said he looks like a police dog. I know it. And he's a stuck-up snob in the second place. Isn't he, though? He thinks because he's cashier in a bank that anybody worth less than 200,000 bucks is a hobo. You hit the nail on the head that time, And mister. he's the only guy in town that wears a gardenia. I hate guys that wear gardenias. And furthermore... That's all, mister. That's all. That's two bits worth. Goodbye now. <laughs> Billy 
Bells and the orchestra and No Can Do. Pretty good-looking assortment of cars. Oh, look, McGee, that's awfully cheap for that beautiful car, isn't it? Where? That one right there. Huh? It says Packard 120. Oh. Isn't that quite a bargain? <laughs> that ain't the price, Mommy. That's the name of the How car. How do you do, sir? Good day, madam. How do you do, I'm sure. You the mastermind in this rattletrap roundup, bud? I am, sir. My name is Stanley Stutz. <laughs> I'll bet you're a bear cat of a salesman, Stan. Yeah. <laughs> you get it, Molly? Stutz? Bear cat? You see, there used to be a car. It ain't funny, McGee. It ain't? <laughs> no, sir, it ain't. I mean, it isn't. It's a common delusion, sir, that jokes referring to a person's name are excruciatingly funny. Yeah? But they are usually painfully repetitious to the subject. Your bear cat witticism is exceedingly threadbare, so far as I'm concerned. Well... I bet it is a fact. You're the gentleman in apology, McGee. She's right, Bearcat. I apologize. <laughs> well, that's uh, quite all right, sir. Now then, may I show you something? Yes, what? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, did you wish to uh, see some of our stock? You betcha, Bearcat. You mind if I call you Bear? <laughs> you know, short for Bearcat. <laughs> no, not at all, sir. Do you mind if I call you Pole? No. <laughs> Now, now, boys, let's get to business. How about that green sedan over there, Stan, old man? That looks in pretty good shape. Oh, that car's not for sale, sir. Now, over here we have a splendid little car, a late model seven-cylinder Dillingham. Good rubber, new battery. Did you say seven cylinders? Yes, madam. What became of the other cylinder? What other cylinder? Isn't it supposed to have eight? Oh, no, madam. This is a six-cylinder car. We added an extra cylinder ourselves as a special premium. Oh, I... <laughs> Well, I will say, Mr. Stroth. Stutz. Yeah. Excuse me. I will say, Mr. Stutz, that all your cars look beautiful. Yeah. Must keep a guy around here just to clean them up for you, bud. Oh, we do. Oh, oh that lad over there takes great pride in them. Oh, I say, boy, uh, did you polish that new Lincoln we just got in? Uh, yes, Mr. Stutz. Looks beautiful, too, after that Johnson's car new treatment. <laughs> Something wrong, folks? No, no, not a thing. In fact, everything is very much as usual. Yeah. That, uh, the fellow you just spoke to, Stan, is he, uh, uh, a new boy around here? Yes, yes, he wandered in this morning. Uh-huh. I asked him if he was in the market for a car, and he said no. He just had a morbid interest in dusty, dirty cars. I see. Uh, <clears throat> you know him? I've seen him someplace. <laughs> <laughs> Tell the truth, McGee, we see him every place. Yeah. Yoo-hoo, Mr. Wilcox! Well, hello there, Molly. Hello, pal. 
Oh, you know Mr. and Mrs. McGee, Mr. Stutz? Sufficiently, I think. What you doing here, Junior, which is the silliest question of the week? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know how I am, pal. When I see a dingy-looking automobile, I've got to get out the Johnson's car in you and show the world how easy it is to transform it into a showroom model. <laughs> The way Carnew cleans and polishes at one swell foop. Fell swoop, Mr. Wilcox. Oh, cleans and polishes at one swell... Uh, fell swoop is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> you see, you just apply a little Carnew, let it dry, and wipe it off. For a proud and lazy car owner, it's the answer to his prayers. So, when I passed this used car lot this morning, I just had to move in and do my stuff. Yeah. You see, as an expert on Johnson's car, and you uh, are... Just a minute, son. Uh, these people and I were discussing business. Why don't you go back to work like a good lad? Yes, sir, Mr. Stutz. See you later, folks. Good day, Mr. Wilcox. So long, Waxy. <laughs> well, you got a good boy there, Stutzy. Yeah, I hope you can keep him. Well, I rather doubt it. He's only paying me $5 a day to let him polish these cars. <laughs> well, back to business, folks. Now, this uh, Hudson Roadster over now, here... Now, wait a minute, Cy. That green sedan in the back there is just the now, kind of... Mr. A... McGee, I thought I'd made it clear that that green sedan is not for sale. You wouldn't be holding out on us, would you, Stan, old horse? No, sir. It is merely that it lacks equipment for delivery. Now, you take this car here, Mr. McGee. It's only been driven 12,000 miles. It belonged to an elderly lady who used it only to do her marketing. Well, she must have been a quaint old character. She left a package of chewing tobacco in the front seat. <laughs> Well, uh, and yeah, there's a you... street map of Honolulu sticking out of the glove compartment. <laughs> what was she marketing for, ukuleles? <laughs> well, uh, she was, uh... Oh, excuse me a minute, I hear my telephone. I you something. just look around all you like, folks, now. Say, hey, uh, why do you suppose he doesn't want to sell us that green sedan, McGee? That's easy, he's holding it for a friend. But by George, if he thinks for one minute that he can Wait a something... minute, dearie, there goes Mrs. Carthage. Huh? Yoo-hoo, oh. Mrs. Carthage, yoo-hoo! Oh. Ah, uh, why didn't you let her go on fast? She gets under my skin like a tattooed dragon. Well, my goodness, suppose she does act a little like a coquettish dray horse. Uh, She's a fine woman. Well, imagine meeting you down here, Mrs. Carstairs. Oh, how do you do, my dear? Are you alone? <clears throat> oh. <laughs> well, I see you're approximately alone. Uh, good day, Mr. McGee. Hi, Carsty. I'm surprised to see you up and around today. Why, Mr. McGee? Well, judging by the newspapers, that must have been quite a wingding you flung at your mansion last night. The wingding, as you so vulgarly express it, Mr. McGee, was in honor of Sir Humphrey Ramsbottom, the British consul, and his daughter, Lady Murgatroyd. Oh. The affair was notable for its complete dignity, and I regret that the newspapers reported it for the derision of the Hoipoloi. The what, Mrs. Carstairs? The Hoipoloi, my dear. A Greek word meaning the masses. Oh, you speak Greek, Karsty? <laughs> yes. Oh, say something in Greek for us, Mrs. Carstairs. Hoi polloi. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, are you by any chance purchasing a car? You betcha, Karsty. Why? Well, then perhaps I might make a suggestion. Why, of course, Mrs. Carstairs. Then do, by all means, get a motor car which has a sufficiently long speaking tube between the tonneau and the chauffeur's seat. I find it quite a strain to lean forward so much, telling Jeffers to look out for that truck. Where? What truck? I don't... Oh. <laughs> I was talking to Jeffers. <laughs> yeah, I see. Well, maybe we can get a chauffeur with longer ears. I tell you, McGee will see that we get a good car all right, Mrs. Carstairs. He's a wonderful mechanic. Knows all about cars. Really? You betcha, Carsty. Now, you take this little coupe right here. This kind of car has always had one definite weakness. The horn gets stuck. Nine times out of ten, you just touch it like this, and it... Uh, you see what I mean? Six. Please, McGee, don't do that. Shut it off. I can't shut it off. It's stuck. I think I know what to do, Mr. McGee. What, Carsty? What? What would you do, Mrs. Carsty? I would go away. Good day, my dear. Hey, stop. Hey, stop. Come fix this thing. Hey. It's back! It's back! Hey! It's just back! Let's get that horn up! The King's Men singing There, I've Said It Again. 
Sell us the green sedan in the back there. I've tried to explain, madam. That car is not in a saleable condition. It is not for sale. Holding it for a friend, eh, Stutz? I assure you I wouldn't sell that car to my best friend. Now, look, Mr. McGee, will you please consider this 1941 Chevrolet? It's in excellent condition, and I... Oh, I'm sorry, folks. My telephone again. You will excuse Certainly. me. Certainly. Well, Natch, take your time, Bearcat. We got all day. You know, Molly, there's something fishy about him not wanting us to have that green sedan. Well, maybe he does want us to have it. Maybe he's just trying to get us excited about it by pretending it's not for sale. Say, Well, I'll... my goodness, what are you folks doing here? Well, me and La Trivia, how nice. Hi, La Trivia. How's it feel to be a weak old civilian? <laughs> how did you mean that, McGee? A weak old civilian or a civilian of a week's duration? Oh, oh, he meant how does it feel to be out of the Coast Guard, Mr. Mayor? Yeah. To be frank, Molly, if I ever set foot on another deck, it will be because I walked through a pinochle game. <laughs> and when I smell powder again, it will be on the swan-like neck of some lovely woman. Some lovely civilian woman. <laughs> On a dance floor, which I have not scrubbed five times that day myself. <laughs> what was your rank, Latrivia? Chief Gunner's mate. How wonderful. And who was the gunner? Who was... <laughs> who was what gunner, Mrs. McGee? The gunner that you were the mate of. <laughs> I was not the mate of a gunner. I myself was the gunner's mate. Yes, but what gunner's mate? Any gunner's mate. <laughs> Now, that's a kind of a haphazard system, ain't it, Latrivia? <laughs> if a gunner can pick any mate he wants... But I... he can't! <laughs> yes, but you said that... Look! He... In the Navy, the word mate means a subordinate officer having no rank, but taking precedence over enlisted men. I thought you enlisted yourself. I did, Then if that... you were a mate, you took precedence over yourself. Of course I did. <laughs> I mean, no, certainly not. That is, I was oh, not... I can see why you never got to be an admiral, a trivia. <laughs> You're too easy confused. I am not confused. Let me explain. Please do. Very well. Now then. I joined the Coast Guard as an apprentice seaman. Mm -hmm. Then I was made a first-class seaman. Mm -hmm. Then I was promoted to gunner's mate third class. Third class, eh? Uh, you skipped the first two classes. I did not skip the first two classes. Second class and first class come after third class. Don't be silly, Mr. Mayor. When I was in school... This not... has nothing to do with school, Mr. Mayor. A petty officer in the Navy. Uh -huh. Ah, yeah. now, just because you're a little irritated at trivia, that don't give you the right to disparage the officers of our Navy. 
Some of them may be petty, but by George... I didn't say the officer. <laughs> I said the petty officer. The third class, the officer. I mean the third class petty mate. A gunner's man. Now look! A gunner's mate is a... It's just... It's... <laughs> oh, it's wonderful to be home again. <laughs> And do you know what you've done for me? What, Mr. Mayor? You have made me realize what it means to be mayor of a city like Wistful Vista. Until now, the responsibility has really worried me. But no more. What do you mean, kid? Why, when I think that I am the civic leader of thousands and thousands of people who are probably just as dumb as you or dumb as <laughs> I realize my job isn't so tough. Thank you, citizens. Good day, Molly. Thank you. Boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. He sure gets worked up, don't he, Molly? He was just liver with rage. You mean livid, dearie? Go on, livid is a girl's name, like livid de Havilland. That's Olivia. Oh, don't kid me, Snooky. Olivia is a country in South America. That's Bolivia. Oh, yeah? Well, then what does... Oh, hi, a bear cat. <laughs> You ready to do business? Yes, Mr. McGee, and I think the Chevrolet here is just... Now, a just a minute, Mr. Bear Stuck. <laughs> we want to know about this green sedan over here. Yeah, why are you so anxious to keep us from buying that? The best-looking car in the place. Look at them perfect tires. Look at the finish in the upholstery. That's the car we want, Stuck. Please, Mr. McGee, that car was the last model off the assembly line after war was declared. It is not complete. We don't care. We want it. But it doesn't have any... Windshield wipers? So what? We can buy those ourselves. I didn't mean that. I was referring to the... I know. Fog lights. But we don't care anything about those details, Mr. Bearcat. Will you please let me tell you? That car hasn't got a rear bumper. So what? I never learned how to back up anyway. <laughs> Come on, bud. Come on. How much? I'm warning you, Mr. McGee. How much? It wouldn't be fair to me. Quit but... stalling, Cy. How much? $350. Uh, but believe me... No. It... Yes, sir. Here's the cash, Bearcat. Give me a receipt before you back down again. Oh, very well. There you are. Bill of sale and the title certificate will take a little longer. Oh, isn't this a beautiful car, McGee, and all ours? Yeah, for $350. Bucks, yeah, too. let's drive it around the block and see how it runs. <laughs> okay. Well... Where's the ignition keys, bud? You won't need any. Huh? No, I told you this was the last car off the assembly line after Pearl Harbor. So what? So there's no motor in it. No, no motor? Oh, this is ridiculous. <laughs> In nearly every field, there's one product that stands out above all others as the accepted favorite, and usually with good reason. Among no-rubbing floor polishes, that favorite is, of course, Johnson's Glow Coat. From coast to coast, it way outsells all other no-rubbing polishes. That certainly is evidence of a product's superiority, the test of continued use on millions of floors. Yes, there are reasons. Glow Coat not only saves you work because it's self-polishing... It not only gives you maximum floor beauty and adds greatly to the life of your linoleum, rubber, composition, and finished wood floors, it's perfectly blended so that it never streaks, is never uneven. Its quality is completely uniform, and you can count on every single package giving you the same satisfaction. That's why the demand for Johnson's self-polishing glow coat increases from year to year. Ladies and gentlemen, the real test of patriotism comes after the bands have stopped playing and the guns have stopped shooting. Well, the guns have stopped shooting, folks, but our men are still in their pitching until they are returned to civil life. It's to them we owe victory, and it's to them we owe the recreational care and maintenance of morale until they do get home. The agency which takes care of this is the National War Fund, and when you are called on to subscribe, give generously. We gave our boys a warm hand when they left, Let's not give them the cold shoulder now. Good night. Good night, all. This is Harlow Wilcox speaking for the makers of Johnson's Wax Products for Home and Industry, inviting you to be with us again next Tuesday night. Good night. <laughs>